hello students today i'm going to cover our unit number six uh, whose heading is iot physical servers cloud offerings and iot case studies okay so this is the entire syllabus of that unit number six which i have been marked over here let us move to the next topic which i would like to share with all of you okay so in this case the first we are going to discuss about the cloud introduction to cloud storage model where I'm going to talk about what exactly the cloud storage model. Okay, so before moving here, first of all, all of you please understand, cloud computing is a model for enabling ubiquitous, convenient, on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources that can rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. So let us first of all understand what do you mean by the cloud computing so cloud computing we know that it gives us a platform where we can share various resources which are uh, required for us not only share but even we can hire them as per our requirement and then with the help of them we can easily make the services available at any time anywhere wherever we want then we can make them on demand whenever we need them as well as we can share the pool of such configurable computing resources which can be used for various services in our iot system implementation now based on this uh, to do the communication between our hardware resources and our intermediate database servers and then to store or to retrieve the data on your cloud we need the various kinds of communication api so it is very important we have been already studied this communication api in our unit number one as well as two of this subject so once again I am just telling you these communication APIs mainly provides communication uh, between our hardware resources, hardware component and our the software components which are available to process the data as well as to analyze it. So the cloud models for IoT applications are also heavily relied on such communication API. So what exactly communication APIs are doing? They are generally facilitate data transfer control information transfer from application to cloud and vice versa even from one service to another service so what can i see the communication api specify the service invocation structure even they specify the url patterns which are used by the various devices to identify them in this iot environment as well as in what sense or in what format these devices are responding to each other even that will be finalized by these communication apis right so based on this for these um, uh, uh, cloud based applications in iot systems there are various types of protocols are available the one of the most famous and popular protocol is wamp so wamp stands for web application messaging protocol it is a communication protocol which can be used in cloud storage models for iot so generally it is used with your cloud storage all of you please understand one second i am reminding you cloud computing provides us three types of uh, interfaces first is user interface or i can say client second interface is your that middleware which will be your cloud and the last interface or upper one is your actual server or backend databases or servers over there so how the communication happens from client to cloud and then cloud to your backend servers or databases again from backend databases to the cloud and then from cloud to your client machines so vamp is a sub protocol of websocket protocol which we have been studied earlier as a part of our communication api so if you remember there are two types of communication apis uh, mainly we have been studied one is rest and another is your websocket one okay so when you want to use this particular wamp or vamp come uh, your protocol for your cloud implementations cloud-based iot system implementation you need to understand the first four major components of it the first one is your transport second is your session third is client and fourth is application code where in this each component you have to specify in what sense you are going to uh, send or receive the data with the help of transport concept then how the session 
or connections will be uh, established between your various uh, nodes or de uh, devices we can say who are going to communicate and how the clients will connect with their actual databases or how they will retrieve the data and what will be the business logic to drive your entire communication so this is uh, all about your vamp like vamp one more way is provided uh, to do such kind of cloud-based IoT system implementation that is Zively Cloud. See, remember Zively Cloud, uh, it's a, an IoT platform owned by Google. And what it do, it provides uh, or offers product companies a way to connect products, manage connected devices and the data they produce and integrate the data into the other systems. So it's very important it provides me what first i can connect with the products or various hardware components then once these devices are connected we can manage them with the help of this zively uh, cloud based platform then the data which is produced by all the devices it means how they sense the data how they uh, collect the data and then that data we can use for our own decision making and even we can integrate or we can send this data into the other systems for further analysis see the backend structure which is provided by this zavli is the mainly comes with three major components that is data collection management and distribution infrastructure <coughs> then uh, again the most beautiful feature of this zavli cloud is it supports multiple languages <coughs> sorry it supports and implements uh, various standards APIs in its socket like your HTTP API uh, then your sockets and your MQTT apart from this so this is again another option available or alternative we can say to implement IoT cloud based applications see then another one which is based on Python it is a Python web application framework that is known as Django um, and what exactly it is? It is a free and open source web application framework written in a Python language, which is a set of components that helps you to develop the websites faster and easier, which you can further use in your IoT systems for their monitoring and controlling. So what it do? See, because of this framework, you are going to save you from having to reinvent the wheel and to help the elevate some of the overhead when you are building a new site or when you are implementing the new IoT system. So it's very easy by this framework uh, like ready-made tools and various options available for your use which you can use and you can easily develop your application uh, as faster as you can. See it is just like uh, we can say that we are having a mailbox which is monitored for incoming letters then uh, usually it is done by the web server and what that web server do web server reads the letter and then sends a response with a web page but see that when you want to send any response what we need we require a content what exactly our response is and this Django framework just do the same job for us when we are using it in our IOT systems implementation see then the next part that we are going to study that is Django architecture uh, we have been studied that your Django framework is an open source platform which is available for IoT system implementation. So when you are going to implement it uh, using this Django framework, what exactly? It gives me the three main components which provides me the high level of abstraction. So they are just, we can say, a kind of uh, ready-made options available for user to implement their application as early as possible. If I implement one model concept that can be reused in other systems immediately, just by doing some minor changes, I can easily apply. So no need to implement every time these concepts from its scratch. So in our this Django architecture also, it provides us these three high level of abstractions. One is model, second is template and view. Please understand each one is having their own way in its execution. So when I'm talking about are this uh, Django architecture in this diagram, you'll come to know that the Django architecture mainly supports me uh, for this particular model view architecture. If you see at the top, there is a browser 
browser is for users interaction where user will access the contents through this Django framework or implement them then up for user self the templates are available immediately so user can implement his or her own application with the help of these uh, templates they can modify it they can update it as per the requirement see then uh, we are having the next component as a view component which is specified over here which is an interface between your template and a model which is finalized and which mainly interacts with your backend database see then when i want to use all this iot application and uh, then uh, i want to give it to user then definitely i need to work with this architecture in this way along with my this url dispatcher okay so i think you got this point now apart from that the one of the most famous and today it is getting more popularity uh, in iot implementation that is aws for iot AWS simply stands for Amazon Web Services for IoT. So, what it do? It offers several cloud based on the demand platform which can be used for IoT application development. So, you can use this Amazon Web Services as per your requirement and uh, they provide us the cloud for our IoT system. So, when we are getting these particular clouds, we can easily implement our own iot system and we can manage it see for this purpose they have been given various uh, amazon cloud options like amazon ec2 i can use amazon auto scaling i can go with amazon s3 that is amazon simple storage service amazon rds and amazon dynamo db as per the requirement as per the application need you can select any one web service for your iot application so it's easy and uh, it's all details are available on your aws you can easily search on amazon.com to find out these amazon web services and their features to use in your iot systems okay guys then up to this point what we have been discussed we have been discussed the cloud storage models or physical servers which we need as a part of iot system implementation now further onwards uh, there are various case studies are included in your syllabus and already few case studies we have been discussed earlier in our uh, previous uh, course discussion like uh, we have been discussed about smart home uh, implementation using IoT then we have been even weather monitoring system smart irrigation system those who have been already discussed so try to study them again try to prepare a notes on them keep ready for you similarly one of the case study I would like to highlight here how we can make our home secure using the home intrusion detection see the main objective of oh, this particular kind of system is to develop an IoT system which can detect the intrusion with the help of sensors and what we need we need these sensors to be properly placed so that the uh, we can detect the intrusion effectively and uh, again user interface devices should be connected to the network see it is just like what in my intrusion first of all it means anyone any unauthorized person or in other way i can say any illegal one try is trying to enter in your house then how we can capture them then we know the possible ways from where they can enter into in your house or even they can get into in your house then what to do in that sense you can have this application with the help of IoT for that you will you will require certain uh, sensors which you can deploy maybe on the overhead of your door maybe on windows or wherever you feel that yes this will be the entry point or this could be the intrusive intrusive point for my home then you can put that and then you can connect those sensors along with maybe sensors maybe somewhere uh, you can have some time you can connect your cctv cameras you can connect some air motion sensors so you can find out who is exactly coming and who is the right person whether you are do you know about that person or not and if some unknown person is entering in your house then can you have somewhere alerts can you have somewhere notifications that you can implement with the help of this home intrusion detection system so uh, thanks a lot for attending my this particular session and i hope you you will enjoy this session and one more request to all of you please prepare the notes on it i'm going to share the questions based on this unit number six for your help thank you very much